What's going on? So first up, this is my one-man petition to get H&N back on the air. Just want them to. Big fan. Anybody else want anybody else want H and N back on the air? Awesome. All right. So what's in the name of text files? It's an at symbol for everybody who didn't get it. it means it's on Twitter. There's so many people who came up to me and was like, "What are you doing with text files again?" Uh, so it's just. And this is approved by Jason Scott, so I actually got his approval for all the photos of him in here. All right, so intro. I am that, which is awesome. Fuck all y'all. I do this. Any, any other Nova hackers in here? Yeah. Anybody not figure this one out? There you go. I do that. Anybody else like that? And I'm one of these. Kid at heart, but I have two kids, which is awesome. And one on the way. So, but I'm not quite as cool as that. <laughs> or that. <laughs> or that. <laughs> Notice that it had stars around it, okay? But maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'm as cool as that. All right, so black box testing. Anyone ever do black box testing? Yeah? So it starts like this, right? Right? No, they really just gave you company X and say, hey, go, have fun. So step one, talk to Aaron. Aaron's cool, got his number, he's a fun guy. Um, or Ripe or Afnec, whatever. And that's what normal, normally do. It has a really cool REST service where you can say, hey, what stuff does this company have? And I use Microsoft as an example. But they have so many customer IDs that it's impossible to get everything. You have to go to each one of the REST interfaces and enumerate it and whatever. But there's this really cool command on the command line. I know it's scary. Just hold on. So you just type who is, blah, 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 and then these weirdly real funky characters and company. And it gives you everything. So you get all the IP space. But what if they don't have own that, right? If they don't have an IP space, that sucks. You're not going to get anything back. Jason Ross, who's sitting right up front, has show enough, which is awesome, and we'll be talking about that later. So that's step one. Step two is talk, listen to this guy, who he hates that picture. Where is he? Bastard. All right, and do open source intelligence with PTES. So, okay, cool. This is one that a lot of people forget to do, is just send an email bounce into their internal, uh, into like xyz at domain.com and see where it comes back out of in the email headers. And sometimes you can get it that way. Or just pray. Um, so you can try and DNS brute force and hopefully um, gateway.whatever.com is in there. So again, the problem here is like they might have www.domain.com out there, but that's not where all their juicy stuff is usually. It's there inside their company. And finding that gateway or that actual IP that they use is, is tough. And Clez.net, God rest its soul, um, RIP. But all right, so here's the problems. Very big majority of the companies out there don't own their own IP space. You rarely get internal IP spaces from open source intelligence gathering. And a lot more these days, people don't actually host their own email gateways. So this I left in there accidentally, but it's cool because it's black box, stuff grows, shit grows. So let's just do the TLDR version of this talk. So if you want to get out and go get food, I'm okay with that. All you have to do is um, listen to this one line. I collected all of the DNS on the internet that I could and I put it in a database, and I'm going to be releasing it at the end. So if you're not here, so if you're not here at the end, you can wait. So pointer records is where I started with. Pointer records are easy. Anyone not know what a pointer record is? Probably a lot. No one's going to admit it. All right, so it's in Adder ARPA. You can learn about it in Networking 101. But everybody forgets about it. So why did I pick that to start with? Because it has cool stuff like this, 
gateway dot whatever, apple dot whatever, apple dash gateway dot whatever, and that. <laughs> the dot hacker dot use dot c dot the dot pimp dot is dot the moose dot org. I thought it was fitting. And then you go to Smoo, oh, all the Smoo stuff. Anyone understand what this is? <laughs> I told Bruce that I would not wear the shirt anymore, so just, you know. It's not breaking that rule. But, okay, so this is why I decided that I wanted to start with pointer records, because it, there's only 4.2 billion. That's not hard, right? It's, but it's a number that I could actually achieve. So, starting with bash and dig, I said, okay, I can do one request per second, which is 133 years, if everything goes all right. Not gonna happen. So I tried nmap, and nmap did two second, or, uh, 24, uh, slash 24 in two seconds. One year, okay. But that's if everyone is as fast as Google's DNS servers, which didn't really work out for me because I didn't want to be as old as this guy by the time I was done. So anyone know what bindshell.net does? What do they do? Beef, anyone heard of beef? Yeah, those guys do that. They also do a lot of other things that a lot of people don't use for some reason. I want to call all your attention to one of them. Cool graphics, right? This is a keynote, I had fun. So this is called Mass Resolve. It does reverse or multi-threaded reverse DNS lookups on a net block or a file of IPs. But it does it really fast. 3,000 requests per second. So I could essentially do the whole internet in 16 days. Awesome. So guess what I did? <laughs> so Anyone know what time is, right? It calculates how long a command runs on a Unix system. So that is actually um, 262,974 is, is six months. So it took me actually six months to get this right and get it done. Um, the, three, um, the user is how long it took me and like all the research, so it took me nine months to actually complete it because I had a lot of issues trying to figure out how Mass Resolve was doing stuff and how I could actually handle all that data. And I used three systems, so as well, while I was looking for what um, nine months was in minutes, I also found this, nine months of pregnancy in under two minutes. I hope my wife is watching, please. Two minutes is good. Because nine months of pregnancy is fun for men too. So I used SliceHost initially, and if you can read this email, which you probably can't, it says, hey, we got an email from Rackspace, which is our parent company, saying that you kind of DOSed their servers, DNS servers. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and there's more information about it, saying, hey, you are violating our terms of service. Why are you doing point of record lookups? I'm like, <laughs> just kind of slip that in there. And the guy, like, I chatted with him a little bit. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but it's not malicious. So I sent him an email saying, hey, this is not malicious. It's intended. And they said, OK. <laughs> so I verified it's not malicious, so they're OK with it. But Mass Resolve doesn't directly throw things into a database, so this is what I ended up with. 40 gigabytes of text files and a seg faulting grep. <laughs> Checkbox. And I finally figured out how to load it into a database when someone showed me what a database was. And that's 668 million records that got thrown into that database. That's the point of records that were live and active and valid um, when I ran this the first time. But it's really slow to search a database. 
Like, you can search for exact strings, but how many times are you going to search for an exact string when looking for DNS stuff? So I bought one of these. From there. And it forgot to format it. I can go back one sec. From there. Now what? <laughs> no, I formatted it. Anyone believe me? <laughs> Continuing the addiction. All right, anyone ever read this book? It is awesome. It's about how, like number theory, once you get enough data, that the outliers don't matter anymore, that it's actually a more important information, but it's a great book. Anyone who does large data set analysis, you've got to read this book. This is an amazing book. And I got addicted to data, like everybody else is in here. So anyone know how many different record types there are? I started with pointer records and said, hmm, well, there can't be there's more. What? There can't be more than 255. Why? Because that's the size of the field. True. But that doesn't mean that there can't be. There just can't be the same record type. I'll, I'll explain later. Um, so there are 66 types, but I've seen over 200. People use their own record types. Explained? Got it? All right. So what's the fastest way to get them all? Zone transfer. Yay. So what is a zone? Oh, that's really loud, sorry. All right, that's a zone. Example.microsoft can be a zone because it can have stuff under it. Uh, Microsoft.com, those are zones, right? That's what Microsoft says is a zone. That's on their documentation. <laughs> right? These are zones. Zone transfer. Anyone know where I'm going with this? After I talked to HD a little bit about this beforehand, he's like, oh, and did it and pushed it to Twitter. Thanks for killing my talk, fucker. All right, so um, the TLDs, org, pro, info. So what do you get in these zones, though, right? Name server records. Anyone know how DNS works? Like, yeah, it goes up and then back down. So if there's A records in there, guess what happens to www.google.com if there's an A record for it in the top level domain? You can't ever go anywhere else. This is also a zone. Anyone know what that is? So B, C, F, G, and K, or the root DNS servers, also allow zone transfers. <laughs> so we got org, info, and 65 other TLDs that allow zone transfer, and the root DNS servers. Now, I took this out of a talk that I did at Nova Hackers, but um, there was a D dot GOV TLD that allowed zone transfers for a while too. Anyways. But Common Net failed to transfer their zones. Now, remember where I said I'm kind of addicted to this stuff right now? I haven't really learned how to quit. <laughs> yeah, enough about that. So. Oh, and it costs a lot of money to register a domain if your registrar is like. TLD. Hmm? No, I didn't. No, I'm not registering a TLD. So you become a registrar and then want to update the .com, it costs a lot of money. Anyways, going on. So you follow the tree down, right? So you say, hey, zone transfer this. I get all of the name servers for all of the things in that TLD, I do the TLDs, I go further back and I keep going. So what other resources can I get if I can't zone transfer it, right? 
There, Alexa has this really cool CSV file. It's the top, the top one million domains. Whee! <laughs> All right, and the next part is, if you've never zone transferred, you probably only do it to the first one. You are required to have two name servers. Now, in the top Alexa top one million, about 12% of domains allowed zone transfer on name server one. Guess how many allowed on name server two? A lot larger percentage, about 55. Funny pages. This is the stuff that I had fun with or found while I was going on this awesome trip. 21 and 22 took forever to reverse DNS for some reason. <laughs> and if you can't read that, they are owned by these guys, say DOD Network Information Center. <laughs> it took a long time to reverse that. Actually two weeks each. Where I could do a whole class A in a day with all the, DNA, with all the mass resolvers I had. Um, both of these took two weeks apiece. You can make your own occlusions. <laughs> yes, I emailed them and said it was not malicious. <laughs> Making OSN easy. So H info records, ever, anyone ever heard of an H info record? They store data about the box. So it says, hey, I'm an Intel Linux box, or hey, I'm a MS Windows 98 box. People actually store their SSH fingerprints in there, so you know that SSH is there now. Um, so I haven't even touched their machines yet, and I have all this information about them. Pretty cool? Oh yeah, and that. PC Anywhere, Citrix, H232. Anyone ever heard of H232? Okay. How about help desk? This is fun, right? We're having fun, right? So what would you search for? Seriously, what would you search for? Yes. Porn. Porn. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and do that? Hold on one second, I'll set that up for you. And we will, unedited, show you how this works. What? Yes, it is an iPhone. And as soon as I can figure out how to use it, it'll go. What would you like to search for? Admin. Admin. That came back a lot quicker than searching, huh? Kerberos. Kerberos. That's a good one. Kerberos, MIT. Oh, Sipper. Ooh, I don't want to do that actually. <laughs> you are free to do that on your own. Not live or taped. <laughs> Any others? LDAP. You can see the URL in there already. So if you want to leave after this, you can. Buy. Come on. So this is being released under the don't be a dick license, just so you know. <laughs> v All right. <laughs> VPN works really nicely. Anyways, so other fun stuff that I found.
that might be the actual password. But, uh, and it's a .NET, so go ahead. And it's stored in the database. Uh, da -da -da -da. So same problem, I had lots of text files, it was a database, slow searching, how do you do 200 record types in a database? I started to become a DBA. But because I am part of a red team, I'm not telling you. Because I don't want you to figure it out and actually own it. So it's the don't be a dick license, right? There's more. So what I started to do is say, okay, I have all these ways of getting domains and all these ways of getting records and all these other things that I can do. So I started figuring out um, how to put that all together on an active system to go and script it all into a queuing system. So basically, every, everything that goes on, I have not touched my system in probably three months other than to do updates. Yes, I do updates. Um, and it basically acts on its own. And I just get alerts um, saying, hey, this is what's going on, and it does it all. So here's the sources, including my wife's DNS. So Alexa, zone transfers we're forcing with the top 50,000. So this top 50,000 is an actively updated list of the actual 50,000 subdomains people use. So everybody guesses www, FTP, all that other stuff and has their own DNS list. I have the actual list of what's used the most. And the top 50,000 of them, so I brute forced that. Um, other online resources and you. If you want to submit your um, company's DNS records, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> it's just outgoing stuff, right? Um, any zone transfers or if you want me to update a domain or, or a specific ISP space, um, all you have to do is ask. Sixy. Anyone do IPv6? This is a great site that lists all of these sites that have IPv6 enabled. Guess what kind of record is generated by an IPv6 host? Quad A. So guess what I do? Take this, update, game over. And they only allow you to do um, 100 um, results per search, but it's an AJAX request that has the number in it. <laughs> yeah. You can also buy some. So you have $69 a month for this specific service. Uh, you get all the newly registered domains, um, anything that just expired, and um, you can download it daily. So how do you parse it? Uh, so any new name server record that it sees, it automatically sends it to zone transfer it. Um, any, any times um, it finds a new domain, it tries to do the domain brute force. Um, new A records goes to pointer records, it tries to, and then does a type brute force. So it tries all um, 200 types that I know of and, and sees if it has a record for that A record in a different type. Um, New pointer records that mass resolve comes back from, and yes, it's continually going and continually updating. Um, it breaks it down into zones and does the respective stuff for those. Um, other, other record types, it automatically tries the brute force and tries to find all of those. Anything older than six months, it automatically rechecks. Um, I'm adding more parsers like all the time, and we're, you can see where all this is going. Like It takes up most of my time. So new input gets checked to, into the database against records, but it doesn't update the record. It adds a new, um, for specific types, it just adds a new record. So I get historical and date timestamps. So when you do a search on this, when I put the rest of it live tonight, or actually I don't trust all y'all, so probably uh, Monday. Um, so you will get all the historical data. So anything that's been updated or changed, like a pointer record that gets, like colleges are the worst because they just update their pointer records because all, all the people come in and out and in and out, so I get tons of colleges. Um, but um, you, get all, you get the ability to search historically as well. So in September of 2011, when I got this Medusa thing working all crazy like um, a couple months before, 
it finally surpassed the complete bandwidth utilization for my entire household other than DNS. So DNS traffic here, other traffic here. And Google loves me, by the way, by it. Like, their data sets have to be larger than mine by this point. So how is this different than Shodan? Um, results aren't based on ports, so you get everything, even if it doesn't have a port open that I know of, I'm not scanning for ports, so if it has a record, you'll know about it. Um, I'm not gonna monetize it, pure and simple. I'm not gonna charge you for access to this service. I use it for me, and it just so happens that it's gonna be on the internet so that you can use it too. And um, if you want to code it yourself or want the code, I, I'm, I'll give it to you, no problem. So all the parsers and everything for the database, it's yours, whatever. All you have to do is come up and ask. So that's the barrier to entry. You have to use your voice. I know it's hard for you guys. Like, as geeks, it's hard. There's more. So why is this useful? Because now I can go all in one place and, and actually search and get the data that I need to without ever touching the boxes, right? So that's awesome, and I get historical data, so if you, even if you change your VPN to no longer have pointer records, and if you've seen this talk and then you go back and say, hey, we need to remove these, it's already there usually, so still gonna see it. I will comply as I am a US citizen to like take down notices and stuff, so that sucks, but whatever. Um, and I went really fast, this is 34 minutes, this is basically the end. Um, so here it is, um, it's deepmagic.com and for forward slash record type, so PTRS is the actual domain uh, for the pointers. I'm working on getting the everything search like all nice and stuff before I actually push it up. Um, it works, but it, it just sometimes only gives like one result, even though there's more, or one type result and there's more, so I'm not a Rails guy or, an, shit. I'm not a web coder, <laughs> now that you know the back end of it. Um, so if anyone wants to help me with it, I'm open. Uh, free to use, it's always going to be, period. Um, lots, uh, the, the, this will mean there's no money on it, I just use what I have. Um, logs last only 24 hours, so if you search for something, I need it for maintenance for it. Um, I'm not gonna look at it or post it anywhere. It goes to dev null after 24 hours automatically. So I want to put it all to logs to the dev null, but I'm hesitant about it because simply I don't want to um, lose that maintenance view, just so you know. Um, and um, it'll never be released to anyone in the logs. I won't post it online like Shodan does. Sorry. So next step, integration with Shonuff. So as soon as you put um, Shonuff in, it'll it should as, as we work on it. Um, any ideas to make it better? I'm open to those since I have plenty of time. Um, I might go DARPA Fire Strike with it if, uh, but I think their stuff kind of, um, uh, there's limits on it and so I'm, I'm hesitant. Uh, so how do I do? So he's out of the hospital. He said I could use this image as long as I told everybody that he's not, he's not in the hospital and whatever ailed him it no longer is there. So he's good. It's just the only picture I could find of him with a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Um, so I am open to doing any searches you want to do except for Sipper um, right now. Uh, and you can contact me at any one of these locations. If you cannot figure out how to contact me, you don't belong on the internet, really. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm gonna throw shirts. I wanna give Rob another big round of applause, not only for the great talk and the awesome work that he did, um, he's been a great volunteer of ours for a very long time for the Actors for Charity, so big round of applause.
One.